I'm from Turkey and I've been living in Barcelona for five years now and I'm working in Page Personnel. Uh, we are a recruitment consultancy. I will give you more details now about our company also, what we do more or less. And then, um, yeah, and then I will explain you today um, what kind of companies that are looking for what kind of talents and then as an international or an expat here, um, what kind of companies that you can look for a job, but what's like a bit more like uh, that, I mean, the tendencies of the, of the job market for international people. So, um, as Page Group, um, for like maybe some of you know us, some of you don't, we are um, a recruitment consultancy, as I said, we have um, offices in 35 different countries all around the world. And um, we are, um, well, we have different brands, Page Personnel, Michael Page, Page Executive, that it's, I don't want to go into a lot of details, but basically um, not everybody in Page is working on all kinds of positions. In my area for the last, let's say, five years in Barcelona, I am specialized in uh, international recruitment only. So I don't work with local candidates or local companies. I only work with, um, well, international hubs here. So um, what do we do in, in general is that uh, we um, collaborate with companies that we sometimes also, if a new company wants to uh, establish their international hub in Barcelona, we also guide them through all the recruitment processes and then uh, we do the recruitment side for them. We interview the candidates, we um, prepare reports of the candidates and then we present the candidates to the companies. So we sometimes, in my case, I'm usually working um, from scratch, like creating a company from um, zero to 100, 200 employees. That, and then we keep working with them, but after, after a while, what happens is that they have their own recruitment, uh, aid, um, recruitment specialists, the managers, so we, have, we maintain the relationship, but up to a certain level. So, <clears throat> these are our brands. The, um, I mean, ma basically, very quickly, the difference is Page Personnel is working on uh, po positions a bit more like mid-level mid management or junior roles. Michael Page is a bit more like director level, let's say like senior manager level, and page, page executive is executive level of recruitment. And page outsourcing is where I am actually working on. That's it's um, high volume recruitments that we create a company from scratch or then we create a department from scratch for the companies, etc. cetera. So um, we, as I said, we have specialized teams like sales and marketing, procurement, shared service centers where um, my main area is that I will explain you what, if you don't know what is a shared service center, it's a very, I, I think that one of the main companies that international talent can apply. I will explain wh what is it exactly or, um, well, uh, healthcare, life sciences, engineering, as you see, like uh, there are expertise in, in every area. So, um, just to talk about like the international recruitment in Barcelona, why in, there are international hubs here, why there are shared service centers. First of all, shared service center is a structure that the companies, the big companies, sometimes they want to centralize their certain functions in certain countries. So, uh, for example, that they want to bring their finance functions like accounting, um, um, financial controlling, etc to uh, one, com one country that is um, slightly cheaper in terms of employment cost, then they can find international talent, and then also they can gather everybody under the same roof that if they want to implement a new process, it's easier to have everybody in the same building. So Barcelona is a very attractive location for these kind of companies because here, if you're looking for a job, you might know the salaries are not really high when you compare them with Germany, with Netherlands, France, England, etc. You can find international talent because of the natural beauties of the city, as well as like, um, I mean, it's it being in the European zone, etc. So it's not like, for example, very far away could be India, Colombia, etc., which would be also employment efficient, uh, sorry, cost efficient. But on the other hand, like, I mean, it's in the um, European zone and it, it's easier to attract talent. I mean, when I call a German person to, like, would you like to work in Barcelona? I mean, I'm getting more yes answers than, I don't know, if I was in 
India, for example. Like it's a, it's about the um, the location and then the the um, distances. So there are a lot of, as you see, these are the um, the population of uh, German population in uh, in Spain. Actually, this is more than Barcelona, but um, uh, Belgians, Norwegian, Danish, like Nordics, also. So it's it's quite international already. Barcelona, that uh, companies they count on these numbers to actually when, when they want to establish their international hubs here. So. It's actually not really possible to put all the positions of international like um, candidates, like international position options in one slide. But I tried to put some some of them quite like um, like main ones in finance area in HR, support IT and then marketing. So, for example, in finance, that um, it's very very common in Barcelona that. Um, we are looking for accounts, accounts payable, controller, billing, cash collector, etc. Like um, with languages, so we are looking for um, a controller for, with German or um, billing with Italian, Portuguese, etc. So it's it's very very, um, I mean, easy to find these kind of positions. And also, um, if you have the languages, then usually these are as they are a bit more entry level you don't have to have a lot of experience in that area that the companies are willing to train on these roles that they can help you grow in these in these structures and also um yeah of course hr the same structures they need also hr and then it is, is very important also if you of course with it they need experience but in IT, they, you don't need to speak in many positions. You don't need to speak Spanish. With English, you can work, and then they would actually um, hire you easily because they prioritize the technical background rather than Spanish. Because with, with IT departments, they usually work with other countries, etc. So, I mean, the main language is English there. It's like I'm re listening to a lot of candidates that they say um, they don't even apply because they don't speak Spanish which is a pity because in many positions, actually, I'm trying to sometimes advertise the advertisements like that I put off the jobs, saying that um, for this position, Spanish is not necessary. My, I mean, I don't want to put a lot of discrimination there also with the language, etc. but it's actually like, don't think that uh, if you don't speak Spanish, you cannot apply. Apply to all the positions that you find interesting. Um, yeah. So sectors is, um, as I said, shared service centers. It's quite popular here. They go by the name of um, BPO also or um, C COE, Center of Excellence. The differences are BPO is more like when they outsource the departments to another provider, but the idea is the same. And then Center of Excellence is more like, um, let's say, instead of um, more junior positions like a customer service, etc., more repetitive tasks, they bring their finance process analysts or like more, let's say, uh, senior roles under the same roof. They gather those people and then it's more like, a, let's say, strategical hub that they build. So, but the same idea again, languages only English or with additional language of any country can be, depending on their um, offices where they have them. So um, IT and digital hubs, it's also quite, um, quite common that, um, as I said, like, for example, to uh, ask an IT project manager to come to Barcelona from, I don't know, even sometimes Switzerland, where the salaries are really high, they, uh, they are really uh, interested to, to come. Of course, not everybody, but... So the companies that, as they can find the talent quite easily, they are coming here to um, to build this shared services, IT hubs, digital hubs. And then um, there are a lot of like supply chain positions that um, there are a lot of companies like Amazon is here that they have a huge hub, maybe heard or a few many, and they have their like all order to order the cash chains that um, with. Everything, all the positions are with languages there as well. So type of companies. Um, the, the companies that you can apply as an international talent in Barcelona is 
either, as I said, big organ organizations that they open their shared service center here, or startups, because in, in Barcelona there are a lot of a lot of startups, and then um, to be honest, we are not working with them very often as page group, um, but they are hiring a lot of international talent. Again, no English, even like for sales positions. If you if you're interested in um, having a career in an account management, key account managers, senior account managers, or IT roles, also a lot of IT startups in Barcelona. It's also quite um, popular, let's say, that um, they prefer to start their, um, uh, well, startups and um, hubs in Barcelona. So these are the, the salaries a little bit, like we, you can find them in our website also that I put it like um, just maybe like six, seven of them. But you can find in our website a really detailed salary benchmarks. Uh, as you see, I don't know like if you know the salaries in Barcelona, but um, when you compare it with other countries, it's quite low. But of course, cost of living is um, also like lower compared to other countries. And um, yeah, and in many cases, um, people prefer to have a better life standards and then like um, work-life balance kind of like because you know in I mean you're here you know Barcelona the weather the beach and everything so they prefer also they prioritize these aspects than than salaries but yeah I mean it's it's um, let's say in Europe I would say Barcelona Portugal and Poland are the the lowest salaries I mean Western Europe let's say so um, a little bit um, interview, like I want to also talk about the, the interviews. I'm sure like if you're looking for a job that you're going to a lot of interviews, how to prepare yourselves, um, also like um, what kind of like questions to expect, etc. cetera. So um, before you go, um, make sure you do the research of the company. So it's important that you are, um, you know what company does, you know with whom you're gonna speak. You can check on LinkedIn what they do. It's also like the second one, it's important that you have your LinkedIn account updated because these days, uh, first thing that we, lo we look after the CV is the LinkedIn accounts. If you don't have one, have one. It's really um, for networking, for uh, reaching out to people, it's quite important. And of course, like uh, no nowadays, um, we don't have a lot of presential interviews. We usually may have companies also have them online. Like we, we use tools like Microsoft Teams, Zoom, or um, well, Skype is not really common anymore. But um, but still, like when you have the interview here, it's like dress to impress. But I will change it a little bit. Make sure you have like a white background, and then I mean, you are like you are in an interview with the, maybe a jacket or don't make sure that there are no noise around because I mean I even had interviews when people are in, in, a, in a taxi with the phone and etc so I mean it's really um, maybe it's obvious maybe for some of, peop of the people it's not but it's important that you're in, in a corporate environment even though you're at home and practice of course before the interview read the job description very well and uh, because the recruiters, us, let's say, when the first like wave of, of the recruitment process, um, many times we don't know uh, exactly what you will do in this position. If it's an IT role, we are not an IT professional. If it's a finance position, we are not finance professionals ourselves. So what we will ask you is what is on the job description? Do you have three years of experience as an accountant? Do you have, uh, have you ever worked with SaaS? these kind of roles, this kind of uh, questions. So expect a little bit more stereotype roles, like we are actually in the first wave that we are trying to get to know you a little bit and then understand your motivations, salary expectation, why you're in Barcelona, how long you will stay. And you have to give like, um, we will talk about it a bit more, but you have to give good arguments also about your motivations for the position because 50% of the candidates are rejected because the hiring managers think that the candidates are not interested actually in the job, but they are just interested in a job, in any job. 
So practice is important. And of course, if you are going to a presential interview, go there on time or if also online. I mean, it, nowadays it's um, quite easy to click the um, um, Microsoft Teams or whichever application you're using. But of course, make sure that you test before, like if, you, if the microphone works, <clears throat> if the headphones are working, just to uh, don't have technical problems during the interview. So during, um, of course, like don't panic. As, as I said, in the recruitment part in my site, we are um, not there to um, eliminate you. We are there to get to know you a little bit. Make sure in, when, if you're uh, having interview with an agency like me, make sure you tell them what do you actually want the truth, like, because we might have another position that might be interesting for you. And then, of course, like, um, be calm, smiling, eye contact. Try to you know, like answer the questions that the recruiter asks. This is also another thing that we sometimes ask something, and the candidates I know, they're also getting excited or I don't know, and then they answer another thing, that they, or they over-explain things. You don't have to over-explain. Just like um, as a brief explanation, tell, tell us what we ask. Like, just answer the question. And, and then at the end, ask questions. When are you going to get back to me? Um, what do, how did you find the interview? Or like, um, I, I don't know, anything about the company? Like, what, what kind of, uh, what the colleagues, for example, what, what kind of team that I will be working in? How is the manager? Like, what, what he expects? Because the next round, if you pass, will be with the hiring manager. So get to know, try to get to know him a little bit, because then in the next round that you might have a better connection with the person. And yeah, so feedback. And ask for feedback. Just don't expect only from the recruiter. Write to them and uh, try to, um, I mean, asking for feedback is understood as an um, indication of motivation for the job. So if you do the follow-up, it means that you are actually interested, which is a positive thing. Of course, the um, recruiters, also HR professionals in the companies, they have to get back to you saying like a certain feedback, but make it a little bit collaborative. Don't only expect from them. In two, three days, ask again. In one week, ask again. This is not something that you're pushing too much or stalking or anything. This is actually good to ask for, for feedback um, after, after a certain time. And you can send us your CV um, on pagepersonal.es. We also have a stand over there that you can come if you want, um, if you have any, um, I mean, any further questions. Ah, yes, also. Um, there will be there are the surveys that if you can fill them up, perfect. Thank you.